Today we'll be talking about terminal services. Welcome everyone. I hope you had a good evening yesterday. I, I did. Very. I maybe sit down a little bit later. And um, yeah, I will talk about um, exploring terminal services. And um, I will uh, release today some uh, tools that my friend uh, Patrick Carlson has written and some tools uh, that I have written. And um, I think I just keep, keep the talk to the fun stuff, you know, so I have some, some nice uh, demonstration, then boring slides. You will find the tools on the CD that you got, but um, I think uh, Patrick on his site secure.net is going to uh, uh, really, uh, have a web page there for you. So what should I talk about today? Well, uh, I don't know if anyone heard my speech two years ago about Citrix and terminal services. <laughs> oh, fun. Perfect. I will like continue from there. So I, w I will. I will. Last time, okay. I'm going to talk. Say it like this instead. Like C tricks and terminal services. Is is someone here who doesn't know how it works? Really remote desktop things. Okay. And what I spoke about it was like breaking out from given given environment. And um, and. Uh, I did uh, also talk lots about about Citrix and their published published applications. But what happens if you have a shell on a Citrix or terminal server? What should you do? What should a hacker do? What will he do, more or less? So I was talking about very very briefly about exploring, and then I will talk a little bit more about uploading files, and I will talk even more about gaining system, and the most fun part, controlling the local hard drives of the clients connecting to, to the Citrix or terminal servers. That will be fun, I guess. So, exploring. Yeah, this is normal stuff, you know. People connecting to a, to a terminal services, Citrix, they, the first thing they do is doing a netstat, if they are bad intended. It's, it's because they want to see what servers can I reach and what clients, clients are connecting right now. You can do ARP to see a little bit more IP addresses and net user view and such session. Remember that you are sitting home on your local client and you are connecting and have a desktop on a remote server on a different network. So if you're doing like NetView, you will see the computers that surrounds this, this terminal server or Citrix server. And that's interesting. I will, I will, I will also uh, talk, I will not talk about this. <laughs> it's normal stuff. But you have to remember, you can also do lots of this stuff to access to different accounts on your own machine. You're, you're, you're in this session, they can start a Citrix session in the session to, to gain, to password guess to other, other accounts. Maybe you're not allowed to log in from the internet from, from, uh, from a Citrix session, or, or you can't reach VNC from, from internet. But on the terminal server, and if you find the client, you can start password guessing on, this, on the same machine that you are. And VBS, yeah. Oh God, my friend Patrick, he's so amazing, you know. He wrote the Excel port scanner. It's it's, it's on the CD. It's, it actually works. So, <laughs> so if you have a, like a, like a, you want to port scan a network and you have just uh, can you just run Excel there. Well, <laughs> and he also experimenting with user switching. You know, like the, like the fast user switching? Yeah, I have actually got that working in uh, Excel. Like, you just write which session you want to uh, send your session to. You will, like, exchange sessions. But the problem is that you have to be administrator, 
and you will send your administrator <laughs> interface to some other guy. But, uh, well, there, there could be some, some uh, interesting things to do there, but uh, we will not release it here. Uh, we'll, we will look into it more deeply first. So the VBS thing, it's, you can use like Windows API calls, you understand? So you have like unlimited access through Excel or Word or something. If you're allowed to, uh, to run this DLL VBS. Sometimes the terminal server and Citrix servers are are really locked up, you know, you can't run anything, you can't access cmd, command.com, ftp, and you want some, you want a good shell to, like, start your programs from, like a run dot 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 box. People forget about Progman. You know Progman? The old Windows 3.1 desktop? Yoo-hoo! <laughs> yeah! And it's, it's, it's perfectly, if you have this run thing there, and, and uh, so you can have this uh, history of commands, so you can do lots of commands. And this computer management, management thing, people are forgetting about that too. If, you, if you're going to lock down a computer, a terminal server, Citrix, well, you, you have to lock down so much, you know, it's very hard to use the, 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 the computer. But I think it's the only way. I will also say, I really like terminal service and Citrix. I think it, the idea is very good, but you have to think twice how you implement it and why you're using it. That's just one thing. And the run DLL, have you, have you seen all the, the things you can do with the run DLL? Oh, try to disable that. If, if you, were, you can do like starting the network place wizard or maybe telnet, why not? So you can do lots of things through run DLL too. There, there is a very, very, very big list of, of things that you shouldn't be allowed to on the terminal Citrix server through this run DLL. I will not talk about it. So uploading files. Sooner or later, the client or the hacker wants to upload his stuff. He wants to run his local exploits to gain system. And he wants to upload his, his exploits. This is usually and easily done by the, the normal terminal server in Citrix local client map. That I will explain. It will be like the, 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 the local client connects to the server, the ter terminal server, and in this session, this desktop, remote desktop, if you open Explorer, you will see his local network drives there. And it's very easy to just double click on it and, and run your, your exploits from there. But very many people don't allow it. So they disable it, that feature, and maybe, yeah, they disable it. The other way is, of course, if, you, if this terminal server, Citrix server, has internet connection, of course, it's very easy to just, just download, download the stuff. But what happens if you are, are uh, it's a very locked up computer, that the local client driving mappings is, is disabled, and, and uh, you have no internet connection from this session. There is a program, I found it somewhere, and it's, you can find it also, it's called netsend.exe. It, it converts a binary file to, a, to a, a text file, a readable text file. And, and it's so amazing, I, I, I like it a lot. It, it's, it's, so you can, you can read the, the, the file. So what you do is, is you transform your binary that you will upload to a text file and open it in Notepad, copy everything, and then you open Notepad on on uh, on the terminal server in in the terminal server session, and you do paste, and you got your program there. And if it's larger than 64k, it you you uh, encodes it. 
And how should you decode it? Well, of course, the guy who wrote NetSend also wrote a program called mode.com. And um, it's a huge encoder, also readable. So you just copy, paste, save, and then it's just ready to execute. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it's amazing. But if all fails, if copy and paste is also disabled, of course, you're, you are able to type, right? You can type your username and password and stuff. Of course, the last thing you can do is upload the file with the keyboard. It takes a time, but I've written a tool that does it for you. So it, it should be <laughs> a little bit faster than, than doing it by yourself. I'm doing a demonstration later. It's quite fun. And uh, this script can also transform files to a debug script. Um, I don't know if you, you um, is, um, know the tool Breeze. It's a, it's a Perl script that um, uh, does this U, uh, Unicode. Unicode bug in uh, IIS, no one? Uh, well, there's um, a feature in that uh, Unicode tool to upload upload files as a um, debug script. Um, I've written that script and uh, I just modified it so I have no size limit and um, that, that's pretty hard in, in, uh, in debug.exe that just cannot, can handle uh, 16 bits per programs. So, and um, gaining system. So we have now uploaded our stuff on the on the on the terminal server. So now we have to gain system to run these programs. The normal thing, of course, is is replace system binaries. The easiest way. File write stuff, you know, you just change the backup program to your 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 uh, stuff, and like new new uh, fully qualified path. There's a problem in Windows, like Unix. I have solved it in in several years, but but uh, in Windows still is there. Like Utilman, you know, the Utilman exploits right there. Uh, start experimenting with it. Just copying U Utilman to a local directory, and. Uh, and uh, then you put your your DLLs in that directory and start Utilman, and it will try to read your DLLs instead. And the thing uh, I have also I have written a small program that um, a skeleton program, more or less. I will make a demonstration that um, does this. Um, uh, it's almost like shatter. Do anyone would, uh, went to the shatter speech? The window shatter? Yeah. It was so cool. I loved it. Oh, God. And, it's, and they talked about that this is going to be a problem with all the, all the you know, terminal servers and Citrix servers. So, but that I've written is just a basic skeleton 1A stuff. But I will show you how it works. And... Um, one of my friends told me, why don't you just uh, install the Trojan driver, printer driver? And I said, well, well, what are you talking about? Well, what you do, they have actual code and working uh, exploits for this. I will not release anything. What you do is that you have your client, have a, you, you share a printer, a Trojan printer, and when the, uh, when you're in the terminal session, you're allowed to add printers. And you search for a printer and you, sh you sh uh, point it back to your Trojan printer. And when it tries to install a Trojan printer, it runs a command prompt. And the installation will fail. So you got a command prompt as with local system rights. It's pretty neat. And the, the m most fun part of it is it says like, it failed and you want to retry. So it, if you close that, com uh, that window, the command prompt, you can just retry and it will get a new one. Perfect. <laughs> and um, here's the weird part. I will not talk about the normal stuff. 
of course, when a when a when a user logs into terminal Citrix session, uh, there runs login scripts and stuff, and you can do stuff to to the the guy's hard drive there. But I will talk about a vulnerability in Citrix that has been patched right now. Uh, Patrick found it and I've wrote, uh, written a tool for it. It it um, steals or Game, you get access to uh, to uh, Citrix uh, lo local hard drives of uh, Citrix users, and um, yeah, I will maybe talk about here. What it does is like it uh, if you're running Win objects from Sys internals, you will see that all Citrix sessions has these DOS devices. For in this example, in session one, his local hard drive C is mapped in this Citrix session to X, okay? And the other user has uh, almost the same, but he has in, in, in session two. With one line of API and admin rights, you can map the other guy's uh, hard drive. You just point, I will not have my session, I want this guy's sessions. And you get his, his hard drive mapped to X instead. You just change the one to a two and you get his hard drive. Or three to a third person. And he's written a very easy, nice tool for it, GUI, so you can just click it. And, um, and, um, yeah, it's easy, and, uh, easy to enumerate and so it's, yeah, you will see it work. I will make a demonstration of it. There, there is a patch available for this. So my my friend Patrick, saying, okay, they patched it. But if I'm administrator on the term of Citrix server, I have access to all of the processes, right? And becoming local system as administrator is, is, is far too easy. It's just install the program as a driver and, and run, it, run it as a driver and your know, local system. So as a local system you have, you can connect to all these processes. What he does is he locates a process of a user, copies the credentials and starts a reverse shell and with these credentials. This means you get a shell with the credential of that, that other user, the Citrix or terminal server user. And that means you can access his local hard drives. I will show you in the, in the, in the demonstration also. It's a little bit hard to follow that demonstration because it's so many different things happening. There are like two, two um, uh, 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 Citrix sessions and there are, and there are um, uh, this, um, reverse shell also, so it's, it's uh, and local hard drives and stuff, so it's, but I will try to speak very slow. So, if you have a connection to, to um, uh, if you are in a Citrix session, you can always map your local hard drives like this, or in terminal server, you can always map your uh, local hard drives like that. The interesting thing is, in terminal server, you can also map the guy's local network drives. You understand? He's on his client uh, LAN, you can actually access. So he's, if he has an administrator on his, 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 his network, connects to his uh, terminal server, that a bad guy owns, he can access all the, the, the maps that he has accessed or has in his, uh, yeah, what he has mapped. So nice. So I will now give you a demonstration. I will break out from given a my environment. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I think your question was like, uh, you should have a, 
a good policies and and uh, and have no execute. Yeah, yeah, of course. You 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 should try to. I will talk about protection later, and and um, what it says like you have to like specify what a whitelist what you have what you have able to run. The problem is running a whitelist is very hard. It's it's some other guy. Uh, it's very hard to implement it. Have you done it? Did you succeed in? Uh, I don't trust. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the DLLs and stuff, you know, the MSC and everything. Uh, five executables. Yeah, oh, maybe, maybe it can be done. <laughs> no, it maybe can be done. I, I think it's very hard. I've never seen uh, those one of those systems. They're trying. They will try because. I will talk about the, on the, on the protection stuff. And uh, I will upload files, gain system, I will um, run Citrix map, TS inject, and I will access uh, local hard drives. I will not be using this uh, over the network stuff. It's, it will be too complicated. So. Now we all will um, look at this uh, right side. We have, this is now the attacker. This will later be the victim. But right now, it is the attacker. And where I left off last time, it was, it was breaking out from the given environment. So I will start there. So I have um, this um, Adobe thing and uh, it's a published application, so it yes, starts it. And it takes a while. And it's anonymous. Get access. I don't actually know what you should... What are you, what are you using the system for with just five executables? Uh, you probably should use v VPN too. So, so this is um, there's no desktop here. You know, it's an Adobe Reader. So what you do is, of course, to break out from given environment, the easiest way is just ch choose open. And then right click on something and choose explore. Have you seen this before? Yeah, there was other speech about uh, running explorer from a, from a, from a vulnerability. Uh, the VNC stuff. Yeah, here's the desktop. It was just hidden. <laughs> so, so now I'm, I'm anonymous. I'm anonymous here. Uh, I will change the font for you. I think this one will be all right. Can you see this? So I'm the attacker. It's this computer, but what you see here is a Citrix session. So we, this is um, so this is um, the the terminal is the Citrix server is into right now. And I will now try to upload files. There are lots of different ways to do it, of course, but I will just show the the copy with the keyboard program. So change to a directory that you are uh, able to write in 
maybe a quarantine director or something from an antivirus program or something. And uh, in this in this window, I start something that could read my key strokes. So I copy con foo dot bar or something. Okay. So this is this is uh, uh, the key stroke listener right now. So I would change this red thing here. <coughs> it's an attacker window now. So on the local, I'm, I'm the background is a, a Citrix session, and the foreground is on the, the, the my computer here. And I have a, <coughs> and I have a, um, uh, so this program will take a file as the input, and uh, uh, it will just type it for me. But uh, you have to, it's very hard to type binaries, so you have to like convert it or something, transform it. I have chosen a program here called regedit32.ex1. It's because that the bug that will transform the script can't handle EXEs. So it is uh, the normal register thing stuff here going on, but, but I just renamed it. And then I run copy with keyboard, choosing the file, and I choose a delay of one, And it's not a Windows window, it's a DOS window, and I should transform it to a, to a script. The bug script. What this program does now, it's enumerate all the windows with names. And I have to now to choose which window I will start typing in. And I choose window 52, for example. 52. It brings up it up to the front and starts typing for me. It, it takes... <laughs> it, it, it's not that fast, no, but it's no flow control. You can try very small values, but uh, it may be messed up. And if you're sitting with a large program waiting for an hour, you don't want like one something to be missed here. What it actually does is it's an um, assembly. It just the problem with um, with the debug.exe. It can just can handle 64k uh, programs. So what I'm doing in is it's running a, a thing that that moves the data segment pointer one and writes the next 16 bytes and then jumps around. So it's, you can play with it at home. I will, this will take about two or three minutes. In the meantime, I will show you another script I've written that um, uh, will, uh, it's a, the easiest, most easiest, easiest way to get local system on a local server. And I will do that on, on, on this side, the left side. So I'm now running this. This can move on for a bit, and I will. Uh, well, well. So here it is, and the Windows keys. You know, like you have to like do stuff like this. So I'm uh, 
uh, logging in as a loser uh, here at the, at the server. It's a Windows 2003 server. And um, I, will, I want to gain system rights here. And I've written a small skeleton that just enumerates all the windows, even the hidden one, and sends F1 to them. It's like the util man exploit or yes, so much exploits right now. So, it, so it, what it does, it just sends F1. You can change it to alt space or something if you like. It's just a skeleton program. So you can change it to alt space and have this util man exploit for, for that instead. And you just press enter and you just continue to something happens like a help or something from a program that runs as a system starts. I will not do this. It takes too much time. It's too many windows. But I have also a program that sends F1 directly to a window instead. Oh, PC Anywhere. I know that one is vulnerable, but I will not use that actually. I will find another known uh, vulnerability. Yeah, here's Broadcom SysTray Windows application. I can't see it in the SysTray either, but yeah, the service is running, I'm, and um, I'm at a demo. So I will send F F1 to this um, uh, window 55. I'll enter 55. Oh, Windows help. Hey, you can't find the help file. You want to find it yourself, yeah. <laughs> I know, I remember. It's called something like CM something. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, open. Who am I? Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> oh, I re reinstall it. Now maybe I use it, do it later. So, well, uh, the file is now finished, uploading here to the right, and um, I will Control Z it and um, write foo par, and it's and. As you can see, it's um, eighteen something, I think. Bold. So, this is a normal debug script file. It names the file. It has some assembly in it that just moves the data segment and stores it. And then it just starts uploading this data. It probably could, you don't have to have like zero, zero. Just needs one zero, but yeah, for demonstration purposes. So how to get the, the file again? I have, I, I was uploading reg ed uh, one uh, dot ex one. So I run the bug. Oh, other direction. And foo dot bar. And the bug runs this uh, debug script for me. And uh, I will now have the file here, I guess. Yeah, there it is. Right. And I now have now uploaded a binary with a keyboard. <laughs> Now to the fun stuff. Uh, this is a, a, a Citrix session still going on here. This is now the victim. This is now the victim. Nothing will happen over here at the, at the, at the right side. Everything will happen over on this monitor. But I will keep this running just 
to your Silvio that this is the client and, and try to understand that the, that the attacker is here now. Um, I will go a few steps ahead and I will log in. The, the, this, this client is, has log now logged in with a Citrix session to the, to the Citrix server and I will now, the attacker now will also log in to the Citrix server as administrator. Uh, usually you can't do this, of course, but I will just for demo pur purposes just show you that if you are, are an administrator on a terminal server, you can do bad stuff. So, we we'll change this directly to Hacktool and see tricks map. So, this is a tool Patrick, Patrick wrote. It's, um, it shows the, the disks that's already mapped. I will remove them just to be clear what's happening here. So, I'm, I, I don't have any map, locally mapped drives right now. So, I click here and it enumerates all the Citrix client connected to the Citrix server. And I will choose victim. And now it enumerates all the hard drives this victim has. And I choose one, one here, it's C. And I map it. Yeah, well, it's one, one, one API call, so it's, it's that, not that hard. And then you can close this one. And now I can go to B drive. Understand this is the attacker running from this computer to a Citrix server, the same Citrix server that this loser is, is on. <laughs> and, and I have like all the access I needed on this hard drive. It's exactly the same hard drive as, as, the, as the victim. So it's, it's, um, it's very easily done. So if you're running in like an ASP or something, you should be like be worried, <laughs> or or if you are like like using an ASP, maybe you should be <laughs> worried too. Yeah. So that was fun. So um, I don't have to exit that one. So the last demonstration is um, more advanced stuff. I will log off here. I will um, start a netcat listener. This is on this, this, this is still an attacker. I'm uh, starting a netcat listener. I want, uh, wing. we're waiting for a remote shell. And then I start um, terminal server or something. Please connect me. And of course, I'm cheating. I will log in as administrator directly. And uh, so, this is a terminal server session on the Citrix server. Citrix and terminal servers. It's the same server that this session is on. The best way to learn this stuff is play by playing with them yourself. You know, like you have to run it to understand it. Uh, if this goes too fast and everything. So this 
program TS inject. It it doesn't need to have be like terminal services, but <coughs> wait a sec. What you what you need is an um, process ID because you will copy the uh, the credentials from that uh, that process ID. So we will find um, find the process ID here. This is a very small font now. I know that. I sort it on sessions ID. It's the just task manager. There's nothing fancy about it. And um, uh, here is Anon. He's from session two. I can start something here that you can see. Um, command prompt, for example. Oh, it was a bad example, but I'll take. Um, I don't know really. It doesn't matter. Command prompt. So here's the the program command prompt running on that. That's I will. Well, of course, I do reader. That was I started from the beginning. So here's Acrobat Reader. It doesn't matter just for show show you. And this has process ID three thousand four. Okay, I have to remember that. Remember that. So I'm r running this TS inject, and I want to copy three thousand four credentials. I will send it to. Uh, To my client, then the netcast listener on my client, you can send it to 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 the terminal server or whatever you want. You know, yes, Patrick just wanted a, a remote backdoor. You know, so so in the port six six six. So it will start start uh, uh, reverse shell with the uh, with the sessions uh, with the credentials uh, of the process. And send it to this computer. Oh, please, 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 please. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. And now I can use net use. Um, it's a C trick session, so I will use client. The star, of course. So Z and there, yeah. You understand? So it's, it's a hard, hard. Yeah. It, it's hard to understand what's happening here because it's 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 two sessions going on, and and then there's a remote shell involved <laughs> to the client. But uh, just try it once, and you will understand what's going on here. It's so easy. Well, uh, now we'll now talk about um, talk about um, protection. So, <coughs> uh, if you disable 16-bit application support, perfect. It disables NetSend programs. It disables debug.exe. It disables lots of weird stuff that shouldn't be going on. You have to do um, traffic filtering, of course, uh, restrict access to ex executables, <coughs> and uh, general read write execute writes. And that means, like, where people are allowed to to save stuff, they shouldn't have execute writes. That's it's very very important. And where they have execute rights, they shouldn't have be able to, to read. Uh, or write, I mean. And Active Directory stuff, you can do a lot with it. Use it, use it. You can make this uh, signature on, on like all the binaries that should be allowed to run. It's perfect. And this uh, uh, secure exe program, now called Sanctuary, they have a live demo on the internet you can try. 
like it a lot. And then my friend, uh, my friends uh, have this site SE46 that do stuff I don't know, but uh, I was told to, to, <laughs> to have it in the presentation. And um, it does something about um, closing the environment. And um, there is this fully qualified path problem. I don't know how to solve it. You have to like write good binaries or something. Process is isolation. Um, validate access to critical API, APIs. And there is a tool from a guy called Jürgen. He's uh, one of the guys who runs Toolcrypt. And he showed me this program, API Guard. And it's so good, cool. And you have to check it out. It's a user land uh, thing that uh, lots of lots of stuff can't be done when you're using this program on your system. Because you're not allowed to to uh, call, a, uh, call uh, uh, something or jump to something that is not from the process you're running. I will not talk about this. If you have any questions, just look at the, the tool and read about it. API guard. But he has now working on a other more, even more cool, <laughs> cooler stuff. It's called kernel, kernel guard. And um, uh, it will be released in this autumn in Finland. And if you're interested in protection, you should really have a good look at this program. It will be open, in, I don't think it will open source, but it will be free. Is this the end? Is it? It's, oh God, it's so much. You know, it's, it's just, I know <laughs> you find everything the time you look. And I, I write here, still no buffer overflows. Well, we maybe see some uh, patches in the future. Um, I have thanked my mom and my researcher, uh, Patrick Carlson from Secure, his fabulous guy, and uh, uh, the keeper of the keepers, it's uh, Jürgen from Toolcrypt, and uh, Jonas Lindin who makes the demonstration possible, and uh, my friend uh, Egil Mannerheim as the base defender. And um, that's the speech. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good time. And see you.